Hello! Last time we talked about polymer amorphous and crystalline structures. We also touched on the glass transition temperature and melting temperature. In this video we are going to switch gears and talk about some of the ways polymers can behave over time and how they break. These are important properties that are considered when designing products made from polymers. Polymers have many advantages that make them great materials to use for everyday products. But they also have material properties that need to be considered in product design. For instance, viscoelasticity. So what is viscoelasticity? Breaking the word down, the visco part indicates polymers can show properties of a viscous fluid and are able to flow. The elasticity part indicates polymers can also act like elastic solids and exert a stretchy behavior. Viscoelasticity in polymers can allow them to flow like a fluid over time. This is called creep. For an example, let's look at bread dough. Initially, the bread dough stands under its own weight. But with time, the dough starts to fall and flow over the board, like a fluid. Why does this happen? Well, when a polymer is subjected to a force, it will first deform elastically, like a spring. When you remove the force, the polymer goes back to its original shape. If you leave the force on the polymer over time, however, the polymer will start to become permanently deformed. This is called creep. For example, if you store your favorite rock collection in a plastic drawer, it may start to droop over time. This is because the polymer chains will slide past each other and flow over time to make a new shape due to the weight of the rock collection. In the case of the bread dough, the weight of the dough itself is what causes the flow to happen. You can see the effects of creep in a number of different places. Sometimes toys or containers that used to snap together when they were brand new might not fit together after a few uses. Meanwhile, plastic shelving and drawers can start to droop over time after holding lots of stuff. Take a minute and think of any products in your home that experience creep. Another property that must be considered when designing polymer products is how they fracture. Let's look at a plastic bag. If you pull hard, it will stretch. It may break, but it takes a lot of force. However, if you introduce a tear, it splits or fractures very quickly. In the polymer structure, the initial crack makes the polymer chains reorientate themselves in fibrils around small voids, called crazes. When the bag is pulled, these fibrils of polymer chains will break and allow the crack to move quickly through the bag. You can see this on many food packages, for example. Try this at home. Take a food package and try to open it by pulling it apart. If it has a tear here slit already cut into it, try opening it in a different spot. You should see that it takes a lot of strength to get it to open. Next, try opening it by using the tear here slit, if there is one, or by safely making a small cut and using that to open the package. It should be much easier now. In this case, the fracture behavior of the polymer is an advantage. One example of where this is a disadvantage is in some shoulder joint replacements. In some cases, the designs will have small notches that can act just like the small cut in a plastic bag. If a big enough force is applied near the notch, it can help start a crack that will travel through the implant and cause it to break. In summary, polymers have several different properties that can affect how we design products with polymers. Viscoelasticity allows polymers to act similar to both a fluid and a solid, which can lead to creep like when plastic pieces slowly change shape or size over time. The way polymers fracture can be both an advantage, like when used in food packaging, and a disadvantage, like when it makes a part break that we don't want to. Overall, creep and fracture behavior are both properties that must be considered when designing products made with polymers. This video concludes our short series on polymers. If you have any questions about polymers, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching.